in here. Okay? So we understand that it's not just about us getting saved and going to heaven. That's all well and good. It's about taking as many people as we can with us. Amen? Amen. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> it's so great to have this free gift that God so lovingly gave us, we see in John 3, 16. But he also has other things he says for us to do as well, like follow me. Right? Jesus says, follow me. Do as I do. I'll make you fishers of men. We dealt with that. One of the first places that discipleship starts is in the home. It's so great when we can go out to other countries and to other states, to other communities, wherever the case, and we can disciple other people. That's a wonderful thing to be able to do when God brings you to that place, whether you either are always being a disciple of God, and you should always be being a disciple of a mentor or another person in the Lord that you trust, but you should also at some point in your walk become a disciple maker where you're showing other people how to go out, spread the good news, tell others about Jesus, and show them how to walk in Christ. And so it's great when we can go out and do these things, but we first must do them at home. If you're going out and doing all these other things outside of your home, but yet your home is lacking, God would tell you first to handle your own family. And so this is a very near and dear part of my heart when we get to speak to families, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, caretakers, whoever, about raising their children. Now, looking in Deuteronomy, I want to read some scripture real quickly for us. <clears throat> the Word of God says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Love the Lord God with all your heart. Teach these words diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And here we're going to see a series of ways in which you're supposed to do this. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Now looking at that, also looking at Proverbs 22, verse 6. And the Word of God says this, Train up a child... And the way that he or she should go. And when he is old or she is old, they will not depart far from it. Ephesians 6, 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, which means training and instruction. So here we see in two places, in the old and the new, well, the Bible talks about training your children, instructing your children. How is the best way to train your children in the Lord or instruct your children in the Lord is to be living for the Lord yourself. How can I get up here as a pastor and train my congregation in the ways of the Lord if I'm not myself living in the ways of the Lord? So we as parents must remember that it all starts with us. We're the ones. Whether you're down here on this front row or whether you're sitting back in the congregation this morning, you need to understand that the burden falls upon you to lead your children in the ways of God, in the ways of the Lord, in the Scriptures. Now, I want to look at just... 
a couple things that we saw from our scripture in Deuteronomy. <clears throat> our responsibility is to be trainers of our children for the Lord. Our passage we just spoke of tells us what we need to train our children at all times in our lives. Train them when we are sitting down. When you're sitting down, have them on your knee. Have them at your feet, at the television set, whatever. Cut it off, but be training them as you sit down. Train them when we are walking. Train them when we are lying down. Train them with the Word of God in their hands. Train them with the Word of God before their eyes on a regular basis. Train them with the Word of God written even on items in our home. To sum this up, consistently and constantly be training your children in the ways of the Lord. The Word of God says when we do this, they will not depart far from it. It does not say they will never depart from it. It just says they will not depart far from it. Many of you were raised in church. Maybe you found yourself falling away for a time, and now you find yourself back in God's loving arms. There's a reason for that. Maybe you never went to church when you was growing up, but lovingly, the Holy Spirit drew you into his house, into God's house. We have a responsibility to the Lord to train our children in all of his ways. Maybe some of you, we talked about this this morning, <clears throat> might be wondering, well, what if I started too late? What if um, I didn't live the way that I should have lived early on? That's okay. Not everyone did. But God says, start now. Maybe my children are older. Maybe they're already out on their own. That's okay. You still have influence in their lives. Let them see what God has done in your life. But if you are honored and blessed enough to be able to start them from an early age, as all these are, then raise them up in the training and the instruction of God Almighty. Because there's going to come a time when you can't be there for them. But there'll never, ever, ever be a time that he can't be there for them. If my couples or my families would please stand and face the church. <clears throat> Alan's under arrest. All right. Okay. And here, here's a part that I love because I don't just get to challenge the parents. I get to challenge the church as well, right? So I'm going to charge the parents. And I'm going to charge the church. Here's some things that was written down in one of my minister's manuals. I love to, to look through some of what other ministers have had to say and what they've asked. And this really, it's, um, it stepped on my toes because this is, this is pretty um, serious, and, and, and this, this, this particular minister really believes that, that, that it should be a constant, and I believe so as well. Do you love the Lord? Looking at our families here. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might? Do you want to train your children to love the Lord? Do you have a plan to train them to love the Lord? Do you set a good example for your children to follow? Do you know yourself the doctrines of the Bible? And if not, are you doing something about that? Do you know the disciplines of our faith? Do you know the books of the Bible? Do you have a regular time of devotion for yourselves? Do you have a regular time of devotion as a couple? And do you have a regular time of devotion with your family? So I ask these families who are standing before us here this morning, 
are these, as you've heard me ask these questions, are these ways in which you wish and will go about whatever means necessary to attain, to raise your family and signify by saying, I do. I do, okay. Now, church. Will this church help these parents to be the best examples they can be? Will this church pray for these parents and their children from this day forward? Will this church pray for the salvation of this child at an early age when it becomes that time, that age of accountability? Will this church pray that this child one day will marry a saved spouse? Will date someone who loves the Lord? Will this church help with the training up of this child? We need to understand that it's not just the responsibility of these parents. When you're Christians, it falls on all of us, the Lord says. If you agree to these things, congregation, please signify by standing up. I want you to stay there for just a second. Parents, I want you to look around. They're not standing up just because the preacher told them to. They're standing up because they have now made a covenant before God and the sight of these witnesses to adhere to what I just asked them about helping you to raise your children. So let me tell you this, you're not in it alone. You may be seated. So we see these, these families here. We see that we love them as a congregation. We support them as a congregation. We want to see these children raised in the admonition of the Lord and dedicate them here today in that right. Everyone who agrees, say amen. Amen. All right. Let me start with Violet. Are you going to click these? Can you get to that? Okay. Okay, okay. I'm going to handle these then. Leftover share envelope. All right, looking at all these, scoot back up there with them. Yeah. Looking at all these, I can only think with parents who are willing to stand before a congregation of God's people with their children and to stand up and say, We too wish to raise our children for God. But I can only imagine the great things that we see for the church in the future. Amen? Amen. Come be seated. Thank you, guys. 